Hey guys, welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. We go live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time and take things that we've gotten for free off the side of the road or super cheap and we turn it into home decor that we sell or home decor that we um, keep for our house. So today we have the cutest little end table. My friend Becky texted me a couple days ago and said, this belonged to my grandma, but I don't have anywhere to put it. Um, would you be interested in it? And she volunteered to drop it by the church property, which I was like, um, yes, please because we are so busy i will always take cute little side tables that people will deliver for free i mean who says no to that i don't i, I don't, don't say no to that <laughs> um we're just going to give it a sweet little makeover we're going to be using cottage color in vintage pink and then we're going to decoupage the top and show you a fun little upcycle for the knobs using iod molds something just quick and simple you've probably seen it done before but i thought it'd be fun yeah, and you know, no one's seen this table. We haven't done this one this yet. This is true. And I've, I've thought, we used to do, it's probably been maybe like six months since I've done this to knobs. So I think it'll be fun. We're using the rosette mold and the olive crest mold. I was gonna do resin, but we don't have any at home. So we're Here, doing clay. I'll bring it close so you guys can see. Let's see if the camera cooperates with us today. <sighs> it is like gonna be a hundred degrees all week. So I'm trying to drink as much water as possible. All right, so rosette mold. It's got all these little medallions and fun things that you can do with them. We are going to use this one to kind of top this knob. And, and then this is going to get painted and I'm going to make these right now and glue them on. And I'm going to go ahead and get started painting the top. This vintage pink is light enough that we don't have to worry about painting it white, which is normally what we put underneath decoupage. And I'm going to go ahead and quickly get this painted so it can dry and then we can get on to decoupaging. Yeah, let me bring it up a little bit more so, so they first can things see you first, good. paint the top. All right, she painted the top. Done. Ooh. Boom. Ooh, aw, <laughs> it might look um it might look white on camera. I don't know if you yeah, it looks pink. It's like a very soft pink and it does dry um darker. And it has a peach undertone, which I have found in so many vintage pieces which is why we named it Vintage Pink. All right, did I get the front okay? I can't tell. Yeah, I'll come around and finish it. Yeah, it looks right. it's gonna need a second coat, so. Yeah, and I will have you do, can you do the drawer first so I can get that drying? Yeah. Oops, oops. this mold, we're both having oops at the same time. It's it's super tiny, it's about the you size of a right uh, quarter, so maybe a nickel. I just need to make sure. Well, when I get it glued, I'll, I'll show them gluing it. Okay. I like the rosette knob or the rosette mold because it's perfect for the tops of knobs. Lots of different sizes of circles. Make sure you cornstarch your mold so that way stuff doesn't stick. I did wipe down this piece before we got started, but no prep needed. It does have a slightly red undertone in the stain, which is why I decided to go pink because if I have bleed through, hopefully it'll match this. Even this short brush I chose to use today is it's not quite short. It's enough. problematic. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to use the uh, S50 because it's got a short handle. Not quite short enough. All right. So I've got two of those made for the knobs. I'm going to let them get a little bit of a crust, probably going to heat gun them at home. You don't have to do the heat gun step. Just let them dry out, glue them on, then you're good to go. And then this is the olive crest mold. No, I'm going to go ahead and glue them on the mold while you're oh, doing Oh, you're going to do it right now? Uh, this is plugged up, so you might, you might not be able to. Oh, just use a knife. Well, I had the little stabby thing to clear your, your nozzle is gone on this, so. I didn't There's I didn't no do knife it. using. No, you just make the hole bigger. We don't want it that big. <laughs> All right, we're going to make the hole bigger. I can use a fork. Let I'll me just, just shove a fork bigger. in it. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you guys want to shop these. I've already cut Oh, it. you're already there. If you want to shop these products, visit jamierayvintage.com. Let me move my mic. Caitlin's probably dropping links because she's on top of that. There we go. You just have to Is squeeze. coming? Gingerly. Gen well, you know me. I'm nothing if not delicate. All right. So put a little I don't know if they can see what you're doing over there. I'm going to show them. Oh, okay. All right. Here's my knob. Gluing my little mold on there. Be careful because you don't want to mush the detail. Make sure it gets on all the edges. I don't know if I got enough glue. 
Uh, be careful, except for I'm not being careful. Okay, I think I got glue around all the edges. Ta-da! I'm going to fix it because I mangled it a little. Mangled? Well, I mean, it's not perfectly round anymore. It's okay. I, I could fix it. You got that. All right, we're going to let that dry. Oh, I got paint dripping down the side. I better get back to that situation. It'll be okay as long as it doesn't dry. It'll be okay anyways. You know, even if you get drips, they sand off. And then you can just, like, touch up paint if you don't like the way it distressed. All right. Um, mush that. All right. These are going to dry. They're going to look like buttons, which is what I was going for. Because this is going to be a, a girly little prissy dresser or nightstand. Sorry. All right. Now i got to get these drips. And then I'll get back to comments. So let's see. What do we got going on? Zeb got both of the fans up at the church. Yep. Um, We're going to have to add an extra one on the stage, though. And it's all it's right. It's a very it. big room with 20 foot tall ceilings in, in the lowest spots. And since we vaulted it all the way to the rafters, um, it's now like 35 feet tall. <laughs> and if you see me using my phone, don't worry. I am uh, I'm filming a reel because Facebook has these bonuses. And if I get, I'm about. Uh, 10,000, I have four, four videos of 10,000 views away from a thousand dollar bonus. And I'm like, I will be making reels till the cow comes that'll home. That'll buy the fans. And that'll pay for the fans we just put in. Okay. So I've got two molds here that I've made. But filming my, I'm not very good at filming myself. I think you do fine. Uh, You're very close up. A little shaky, but. You know, we can work with that. A little shaky. All right. So these these are small enough. I don't really need to put them down. I'm able to peel them out there. And these are going to go on the center of this drawer. So detailed on these IOD molds. Nancy said she was here when it was 88 and people were complaining. Yeah, I complain when it's hot. The problem is when it's 88, it's just recently been like 32. So we're not. We're not ready. We're not ready. It takes a minute. It's, it goes from like spring can snap back into winter at any moment to now we've got 80 to 100 degree weather. This is going to be cutie patootie. So if I was going to buy this, I'd probably pay like 10 bucks for it. And we'll probably sell it for like in shop, probably about uh, 90 and then online because it takes a little bit to ship it, probably like 140. Because okay. this will fit. We can actually throw this thing in a box. Yeah, it's, it's a big box, but we can box. put it in a box. So if you guys are furniture refinishers and you want to just like get your toes wet in shipping furniture, little nightstands like this are perfect because you can bubble wrap them and like double box them and you can ship them UPS or FedEx. We have a UPS account, so that's who we use mostly. All Our right. big furniture, we have to use a courier and that is a little bit more complicated. Front of the drawer here. This is from the Olive Crest mold. I think I mentioned that earlier. Oh, now we gotta be very delicate because this nozzle is fat. <laughs> But this means you get the glue faster. You get all the glue right now, I'll tell you that. It's 110 in Yuma today. That's hot. I got to look at it for a sec, make sure it's mostly centered. So these molds are great because usually most of the elements on the mold work together. And you can really build like a whole scene going on. So this one here, I, I did the mold and split it in half. And I think we're going to bring it like that. Yeah, it works for me. And for the glue we're using, everybody asks every time. This is the Gorilla Max Strength Construction Adhesive. I just put this on. I could let this hang vertical like that, and it wouldn't move. If it's really, really big, you might need to tape it down still, but it's it's got a really good gel to it, so, and um, it sticks. 
Sorry to interrupt, but somebody had a question. Okay. Diana said, I'm, uh, no, no, it's not Diana. Oh, Judy says, my husband thinks it's a waste to purchase the gorilla in the big tubes. Does it dry out in the tube? Um, it really depends on how much you're using it. Sometimes it dries out in the nozzle and we had to cut it like you just saw. But for the most part, we use a tube of this up before it dries out or has any issues. My daughter can see the camera. She knows that we're live and she still wants to go through the front door. <laughs> Welcome to having teenagers. But yeah, I haven't had any issues with this. We're live, sweetie. Like we like are every Wednesday. <laughs> Whoa! I almost dropped this. Okay, well now you know. Goodbye. Hope you had fun and cheer. Well, I can't help it that your elbow is bum. She heard her elbow tumbling and she it's refused. not healing good. And she was forcing the issue because she's really, she, of all of our children, even Harrington, she might be the most competitive. Um, and mostly with herself, she's very self-driven. We're like, hey, you need to take the summer off and let your elbow heal up. And she's not. <laughs> hey, Eliza, we can hear you, sweetheart. Well, maybe that's my mom. I don't know. She's talking to grandma about how bad tumbling was. Hey, your mic's on still. Don't yell. <laughs> I didn't yell. I just gave the universal sign, which is the shh. Neither one of those gals. Somebody's have, like, you should put a shush. you should put a sign that says filming. I'm like, that would require people reading it. They don't they don't respect it. We're live too much. <laughs> yeah. They gotta live here. Eventually we'll have a studio like at the church. We won't be home as much, so that'll be easier. There's no internet over there, though. We were going to do a big uh, table and put an umbrella in it and show you guys how to do that. But that might be an edited video because no internet at the church. And it's kind of too big of a situation to do here. Well, in, I was just trying to figure kitchen. out, like, painting that and four chairs. So we might just do an edited video because we need to paint the uh, barn that faces the garden anyways because it's raw that's pretty exposed easy. that's, that's uh you get, give me some exterior paint yeah I'll paint that. it's not gonna be pretty and we're not wasting money putting siding on it because we're just not right now so, so jamie, we're gonna paint it jamie painted the top i don't think we showed you this is the uh cottage floral decoupage paper jrv decoupage paper and we're gonna be using this on the top so that's the, the painted, the top was already painted. Someone had sanded it and then painted it like a reddish color. It, it kind of looked like a faux cherry stain, but we are, uh, we're going to decoupage it. And this light pink that's kind of showing white on camera is going to be great undertone for that and really play with these. Sometimes if you do a darker tone, your paper will get darker. So just be aware of that. Yeah, if you want your paper to be bright, use a light tone. Okay, I think we still are going to have to heat gun that a little bit. Yep. And then it'll be ready. I'm going to, oh, I can't move this because I just painted it underneath here. I'm going to paint this. All right. You can paint this while the molds are still. Now, the question is, what color do we want to paint the knobs? I was thinking white. Are just you do sure? some delicate little white What if knobs. copper looks really good? Mm, not with pink. Too, too orangey with a pink. I guess I shouldn't have asked you because in my mind, <laughs> I had already decided. You already that one. knew what you wanted to I do. I thought you were in my head, but apparently you didn't get you didn't get in my mind today. I'm I'm the voice of uh, contrast. The voice like of what what's gonna be different than what you're thinking. Lots of times we have the same ideas, like we're at Mexican restaurants and we order the same meal. Well, we've been eating together for twenty two years true. if we count dating. 23 years almost. inevitably if we order different things one of us is like oh your food is better so in order to actually and usually it always it's me. only works for jamie that way i never want her food yeah <laughs> usually it's me so i've just decided even if i don't think i want it i'm gonna just order what zeb wants because then i never have to be sad so i, I put the screw on here so i can hold it a little way from my hand and not burn myself i'm just trying to get a little crust on the top of this clay so that we can paint it and work with it a little without mushing all the detail out of it yeah, I already mushed a lot of it. You mushed it good. It's okay. <laughs> It'll be all right. All right. Did, now I got to get this even. All right. I think that's good. I'm going to put this out in the sun to dry. Okay. And then I'm going to grab some white paint to paint those. So we, Jamie has been feeling really nostalgic 
the last few days because we've been in our little shop. If we include the time that we had the uh, the room four in the years. back over four years, and we've we've been leasing it ourselves and had the whole building for almost three years next month. So it uh, it's it's kind of bittersweet to be leaving the shop on Main Street. It's been really good to us. We've had a lot of success in there and been able to set up our shipping, not in our home. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's been a, I'm going to move this. It's been a good thing for us. It was something we didn't really plan on, but it happened because Molly told us. You have to move the entire camera. Oh. There you go. Molly told us that she was leaving right a month after we bought this house that we planned on renovating. So the timing wasn't like perfect, but it worked out. All right, so I'm going to paint the knobs in um, white linen. I need to oh, say the color right. This one's right. ready then. Oh, careful, that's hot. Just touch the screw. The screw wasn't hot. <laughs> I, I put that on there so that I wouldn't burn myself. I still didn't burn myself. Oh, it, it is just, a little It is a little warm. It's like a hot plate from a restaurant. When they tell you it's hot, they're not kidding. So this cottage color will stick to metal. It'll stick to clay. It'll stick to wood. It's steaming. <laughs> it should dry quick. Yeah. Uh, and has a built-in sealer, so that's nice. Yeah, I need to stop messing with it because it's drying very quickly. You know, the uh, so, so we have quite a bit of inventory to move over. The space is a lot larger. Um, but it's set up differently. Yeah, so the, like... uh, the showroom space is essentially the same size as the entire building that we have now. Um, so we got to figure out how to fill that and do displays a little differently. And that's probably going to be the biggest thing. We have a bunch of furniture we can paint and throw in there, but the biggest issue is going to be to how to display it, what to build, what to buy, you know, and it all takes a lot of time. The problem is this is what I can't put down. Uh, you can set it down on the side. I don't. It's going to need another coat. Here, I'll heat gun this so we can get going. Whoa. All right, heat gun the top. Are you going to do, you're not doing two coats on the top since we're doing the paper, are you? Can you seal this piece to save the chippiness? It's not chippy, so I'm not sure. You mean you like say? seal, like seal the original finish? I don't know. Uh, if it was like milk paint and it was chippy, I would use wax. Because if you use liquid sealer on chippy milk paint, then it will like make it more chippy. Um, if it's just like regular paint and it's really chippy, we used, have used a product called Peel Stop and that'll like take really old chippy paint and basically encapsulate it and keep it from chipping more. But I'm not sure what, sh what you're asking about. So hopefully that answers your question. Rashonda said that space will fill up quick. Oh, I'm sure people <laughs> keep trying to, there people keep saying, oh, are you going to have space for vendors in there? I'm like, no, it's not that I don't love people. But there's two things. One, I'm not that organized and I don't want to pay somebody to be that organized to like figure out like what's sold of a vendors also to make sure that their style meets my, what I want it to be and letting them in and out and setting up and all those kinds of things. It just adds an extra layer to that. And secondly, I'm really good at shopping. <laughs> so I will have plenty of stuff to fill it up. If you can I, imagine, the barn has some tools in it, but I would say if we organized it up and, and consolidated everything, it'd fill half of the barn up with furniture we've already bought. Is this table white or pale pink? It's pale it's pink. It's a pale pink. And I'll um, try to adjust second the coat color will make it you. a little bit more pink. We're using the new, I don't know how long we can say new cottage colors for, but I'm going to say new. It's um, been out, what, a month and a half now? Yep. And we do have all of the cottage colors in stock, and we're shipping it. So if you need more, we got you. And a lot of people have been like, it's not as thick as DIY paint or no, whatever. No, it's a whole different formula. It's totally different. This is mineral-based, and it's self-leveling and has a built-in sealer. So it won't cover as well as regular DIY paint or as quick especially the lighter colors. However, it has a built-in sealer, which means you don't have to seal it. So and the really the good. amount of it's... coats is the same by the time you're done because you got to put paint and sealer. And in this case, you just paint and you're done. So this 
yeah, like this eliminates like any need to wax or seal or have brush strokes in your finish. Um, and the sealer on this has been very durable. We've we've been testing it hard even outdoors, and it's keeping its sheen and holding up pretty well. Margie says she's painting her front door with paint blue. She thinks I think that'll be pretty. Now it doesn't that I know of. It doesn't have a UV sealer, so if it's in direct sunlight, I can't guarantee it's not going to fade. But you never know. Maybe I should paint the front do door of the church paint blue. Oh, that gets, it gets like, a lot of sun, that gets and then I can full tell sun you guys. From like two o'clock in the afternoon on. <laughs> I have done lots of product testing so far. The only problem I've had with it outside is when we painted those two metal clamshell chairs. It rained the very next day and then water puddled in the seat for a couple days and it peeled off where the water puddled. But I feel like that would probably happen with any paint. But everything else that I've painted for outdoor use, including a milk can with a bowl on top that's in my garden, has held up really well. Do you, are you painting the edges? We probably need to get a good coat. I can these. do that with a um, delicate brush. Are you going to do it after? Yeah. So you can go ahead and just decoupage and then I can come okay. back in and use a little artist brush just to be neat and then distress it and we'll be fine. Okay. All right, I'm gonna second coat these knobs and then I'll show them to you. They're not gonna look that great. I mean, they're not gonna look bad, but once we put like a dark wax or dark and decrepit on these, then they're really gonna look good. Flip it around the right way so that I don't mess this up. Let's see if we can, I'm gonna boost you up a little bit. All right, Zeb, you want to carefully show them this knob? Yep. It's so cute. It looks like a vintage button. It's a lot more delicate than it was before. Oh, I, paint right here. I guess it's focusing. Yeah, they can it's see so it. small, I can't tell. It's, it's, a, it's a wee baby. There we go. Did you see Debbie's recent short? Yes, on the nine ingredients that are in uh, the DIY paint. Debbie and I did a video together where I'm pretty sure we used uh, the wax as lip gloss. I don't recommend it. It's not, it's not been uh, bio certified, but <laughs> the products are all natural and pretty awesome. I did once paint Odelia's face with uh, DIY paint for Halloween, but it did flake off when it dried. But it looked cute for a minute. She, looked, she was a pickle. She had a pickle costume and I painted her face. I think Fancy Farm Girl, maybe Gypsy Green, I can't remember. I heard furniture that is waxed has to be waxed again over the years. Um, no, I've never done it. Uh, it. It could, I guess. I mean, here's the thing. Even if, if you got something that's like 20 years old, even like a yeah. liquid top coat starts to get like flaky and... I mean, I every, like everything it, has a timeline that it's going to last. So I feel like the benefit is that it could be waxed again. Because, like, let's say you paint a nightstand and you get a small little scratch in it and it's got, like, a regular sealer on it. That's a lot more difficult than if you have a waxed piece. Sometimes you can just, like, lightly buff that out and then re-wax it and save the piece. I've done that many, many times. So I guess... Depends on the way you look at it, but I've never re-waxed furniture. Now, if you're sticking something out in the direct sunlight, wax can melt. So that's probably in that kind of a situation, I would use like a liquid top coat, but I've had really good success with wax. All right, I'm just gonna, this this cutting is not gonna go well. Are you gonna decoupage it and then use yes. the little paper water method situation? Yeah, we're gonna have to. I'm just gonna sit here and watch. You're doing really good. Okay, I mean, so I am also blowing knobs, so. I am going to cut this so it doesn't. My son actually got into wax and thought it was Vaseline and put it on. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's probably that sounds like right. kids. Uh, Jack recently got into an ink pen. He says he didn't make a mess with it, but I'm still waiting to find the damage. It was all over him, so I'm sure. I'm like, how does it? Um, so this is Top Coat from Sweet Pickens. We've been using it and trying it out with the decoupage paper. It's a, it's not quite as thick as um, liquid patina, but we've been having good results with it. The bonus is the paper is not thick either. It's only 18 pound paper. Need a little bit more. I'm using the assistant from the Magic Pack. We use the Magic Pack brushes a lot for like small, delicate, items 
we sell that too at jamierayvintage.com. Commercial break. <laughs> Okay. Question. Would you use white wax on French millinery or dark wax? Um, I like white wax. I haven't tried dark wax other than if you watch our Waste Not Wednesday from a few weeks ago, I used dark wax when I did French millinery and then green on those um, bust planters that we did. And it turned out really cute. So I guess it depends if you want it to look more moody or more like oxidized because white wax typically will make things look oxidized. Okay, I think I've got this to a size I can use it now. You guys might see my toesies. Oh no. Base wife is babysitting a, a three-year-old. <laughs> she says she forgot how busy they are. Um, Jamie, I just painted my front door with little black dress, so I need to seal it. If so, what do you recommend? Um, you can use a water-based UV sealer, but I would put a little bit of the little black dress in the sealer um, to keep it from streaking. And the other thing that might be tricky, Shelly, is if it's direct sunlight when you're putting the sealer, it'll dry before you're finished. And that's Oop. so hard to not get streaks. So paint it after the sun's gone down and... You can even add a little bit of water to your sealer to extend the like time, the dry time and a little bit of little black dress. Um, you can also use Big Top. It's not rated for outside, but like our door at the shop, I painted in, was it aviary? So that's when aviary came out, actually. That's how long it's been. I painted it aviary and I put an IOD transfer and I sealed it with Big Top. The only problem that we've had is that the transfers are not made for sunlight. So after three years, the transfer has faded and started to curl a little bit, but the paint is still fine. So it's held up well. I should disclose that we have a storm door and that's probably helped quite a bit too. All right, so I'm just using this to get, I put a lot on so that I could kind of mush some of those wrinkles out and it worked pretty well. Is it working out all right? Yeah, I'm just pushing the brush down pretty hard. Now, another way to not get wrinkles is to lay down a coat of sealer, let it dry. Oh my gosh, I missed, sorry, squirrel. I missed an entire part of this leg. Let um, it dry. <laughs> no, just right here. And then you let that dry and then you iron your paper on and then put sealer over the top of that. And you don't get like the wrinkles and the bubbles, but I'm okay if I get a few wrinkles because I'm going to make this like a, sh this is going to be the quintessential shabby chic little nightstand. Um, let's see, is dark and decrepit a powder? So there's decrepit dust, which is a powder. So you wax, sprinkle the dust, wipe back. Or dark and decrepit, that's the patina, is a liquid, almost like a glaze or a stain, except for it's water-based. So it's not stinky and it's a little bit more versatile. Um, let's see. Oop, Cindy says, I have a small side table and I want to paint it with the beadboard paint. What do I need to do to make sure there's no bleed through? It's a beautiful solid oak, wood oak, I think, with a shiny finish. So I would use uh, DIY makes a product called Salvation Solution. Um, it comes in clear and white. The clear is thin. So if you're worried about like brush strokes, I would use the clear. Um, but if you're not super worried about brush strokes, she wanted to have some texture, you can use the white. And the nice part about that is then you've already got a couple of coats of white on there with the primer, which is what Salvation Solution is. And then you don't have to use as much white paint with the beadboard, if that makes sense, because it's already a white like backdrop. Um, you just put two coats on way overnight and then um, you can paint it the next day. And it's water-based. Like if you've ever used the shellac based primer, it is, it stinks. It's hard to get out of your brush. If you get it anywhere, you can't wash it off. Whereas Salvation Solution is water-based. And the biggest thing I can say is that it kind of smells like rubbing alcohol, but it's not toxic. You can use it inside and you can wash it off your brush with soap and water. I used a razor blade to do this the other day, but I didn't plan ahead and I don't know where it's at. It's in the garage somewhere. It's all so, right. So, you know, kitchen knife is fine. Okay. I think I got these pretty well covered. This has a nice little lip, so I'm able to just follow that line. Oh, it's wet right there. Right, I'm gonna heat gun this pink, so that way I can second coat it. If you do heat gun cottage colors, just remember you have to keep that heat gun moving because it will bubble because of the built-in top coat. 
it's the paper's really wet right here, so it's wanting to drag. So I'm just trying to score. It's actually it. mostly dry. There's just a few spots where it's flat. I find that flat spaces hold the paint more because it just like pools on them. All right, I'm gonna do the legs because they're dry. Okay. Would you recommend sanding a dining tabletop and then using Sweet Pickens white oil wax only? Um, we've done it on our kitchen island. Oh man, this island. And it's, it's held still, up well. Like we're a year and a half in, probably a little longer because we finished it before the house was done. And it's still, like I can't get it to absorb more oil. I tried to re-oil it. It does have some paint that's now on it that we probably should sand off yeah. and re-oil wax. We use Here's, it like a workbench. Yeah. <laughs> as is evident with what we're doing now. Um, I would suggest doing four coats on a dining table, letting it dry in between, make sure to follow the directions on the jar. So don't let it sit on there longer than the 20 minutes and then wipe back, let it dry. Anyways, all the information's on the jar. That All that to say, it will like age and wear with time. It's probably not gonna scratch if you put it on raw wood, like ours has held up pretty well, but it has aged. So I guess it's kind of the look that you want it to go for. So hopefully that answers the question. Sometimes I feel like I answer stuff and then I give more questions. You over, you over answer. I over answer. I under I'm the answer. worst over answer ever. Well, I, I never want to be like, oh, for sure. Because I feel like there's few things in life that are sure death and taxes, you know? So there's always an exception to almost everything, especially with paint and products because there's so many variables. All right, I think that's ready for a second coat once that gets done. Okay. So I would say to get perfect coverage, you're probably going to want like three coats of the pink, but Did I'm probably just going to do two out? and then sand it. The drawer's out in the sun. Oh, uh, yeah, it's in the sun. I forgot about the drawer, actually. I forgot about the drawer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me put another coat on that. It's going to need a little heat gun where the mold is. Oh. Yeah, that would be expensive to paint your ceiling with paint blue. There, you can see the pink there. It doesn't look white. It's got a little bit of drippies around the mold. We're going to address that right now. I'm going to dry it out. Here, can I see that? In, well, there's not drippies. It's just not dry. Yeah, it's not dry. Yet. I'll, I'll just use do you need me to brush this here? Yeah, here you can. I'll do this while you do that. So I guess do we want to use dark and decrepit, or do we want to use um, dark wax? I think. I like the wax a lot. What? I like the dark wax a lot. My, I'm just wondering since this isn't dry all the way. Dark and decrepit is easier to wipe back without being too harsh, and this clay is still pliable that I do prefer wax but I feel like in this case dark and decrepit might work a little better I don't know we're getting pretty good coverage on the second coat oh yeah it's it's pretty well there's we'll a, few have a couple little streaks uh, there's a few user error spots on my part that top is super cute so when the top dries we'll put another coat of uh the top coat on there you know what we, I can do too is let me get you a, a brush. Are we done with the white? I can just wash this assistant and then you can paint the edge of that with a pink. Okay. Is somebody giving me exclamation marks, Deborah? She would just like to get an answer with exclamations. Um, if you don't get an answer in a live video, because right now we have 543 people on here, so comments scroll by pretty fast, um, you can always email info at jamierevintage.com and we'll help you that way. But I think Caitlin did answer it. So sorry if I missed stuff. Sometimes it's hard to project and read. Um, Oh, this is for the edge. Okay. I cleaned it for you. Thank you. Thank you. 
it always puddles up like a round detail and that's what takes forever to dry. I like that you were like, I'll, I'll paint the edge and, and here I am. Okay, but remember how you were like, I will paint the sconces. You did paint the sconces. And I painted the sconces. If you guys watch Saturday's Thrift Hall, I declared that I was not painting them, but then somebody bought them and they gave us, uh, they told us how they would like them finished if at all possible. And I was like, yeah, I can do that. And I wanted to make sure it was done just right. And Zeb was busy doing electrical, which is what I called it. And so I wound up doing the sconces because when we're thrifting, sometimes I'm like, don't buy that. I don't want to paint it. He's like, no, I'll paint it. And then, so I said I was going to paint the ledge, but all's fair in love and painting. Now you get to paint the edge. <laughs> I'm almost this got this This is difficult dry. up here. Like if I was down on the floor, it would be easier, but I, I think I can manage. I'll just cut it with the edge of the brush. Just gotta hold your hand steady. I don't have a third point to put down. I'm floating up here. Oh, if you were doing paint blue outside on a ceiling, I would probably use an outdoor sealer. Like, and also that's a lot of pints of paint, so it would cost quite a bit. But um, uh, on although, the ceiling, I wouldn't paint. It's not going to get wet on the ceiling. That's true. I'm thinking about. It. I'm like, it's not going to be in the sun. It's not going to have standing water. So yeah, you could probably just paint it and go. Now that I said that you probably need a sealer, I'm, I'm taking that back. I'm reversing it. All right, can I have that brush real quick, sweetie? The little one or the big one? Are you reaching Will for you it? Will you paint the sides of the drawer? No. This has pink. Hold on, let me finish and then you can wash it out. I don't need to wash it out. I mean, I can, but I just need to dip this brush in. Oh. Brushing this. Um, I don't paint the sides of the drawer because A, it's gonna be inside and they're not finished to begin with. And B, if you paint the sides of the drawer and then the next person paints the sides of the drawer anyways, they stick. So it's just a personal preference of mine. I don't I mean, if you were gonna do, if we were gonna do tons of prep and sand it down and you know, all these things, what we will do is we'll sand where the brush strokes are. We'll sand that off so that it's just wood. Yeah. You could tape off your drawer if you wanted nice crisp lines, but we usually distress it anyways. So it's a non-issue. having to paint lefty. I did paint the back of this nightstand, not because you'll probably see it, but if somebody uses it like in the middle of a room, like a side table, you would see the back of it. And so it wasn't finished to begin with, like the manufacturer didn't finish it, but I did paint the back of it. Also things like this will be in the shop and sometimes you can like see them and I don't want to see like the back of a unpainted nightstand. Sometimes I even paint the backs of dressers if they're not pretty. Even You're though, shaking this. Sorry. You can't work when I shake it? Not doing what I'm doing. So Leah says, I think it was a Victorian fad to paint the, the ceilings blue. So the story goes like this. It's prominent in the south um, and it keeps bugs off the ceiling. There are some people that say that it keeps bad spirits away. I don't think that it does. In fact, I can tell you that it doesn't. But I can see why bugs wouldn't land on it because they typically land on white. And if you've ever been to the South in the United States, there's a lot of bugs. When I, I will never get over the amount of bugs in Tennessee. Loved it, gorgeous, lots of greenery, way too many bugs for this Western girl. We were in Wyoming and they had a lot of mosquitoes down by the river and that was too many. Well, mosquitoes are just, nobody likes mosquitoes. Nobody likes the skeeters. It's like the Wyoming state bird. I'm gonna paint the opposite direction, even though you probably typically wouldn't, but sometimes you get better coverage when you do that and my brush is fitting better. I don't know that we're gonna to get to distressing this because I want it to dry like really well. Well, that's 20 minutes. Yeah, but I wanna, okay. I don't know that it's gonna dry really well in 20 minutes. I'm gonna take this back outside. Actually, I'm just gonna heat gun this. <laughs> I'm just catching my droopies. Oh, you need to sand the back of that. Is it dry? No, I'm going to wait till it's dry and then I'll just take some sandpaper and come down the edge and it'll cut it. Deborah says, I'm from Louisiana and it really keeps the insects away. So there you go. 
a southern girl knows what she's talking about. They got bugs. They can also pretty much grow a garden year round, so there's that. There are pluses and minuses to just almost about every bit where. For me, the minus here would be the snow. Some people like snow. Hey, there's a bonus candy cane here. Gross. I'm gonna have to soak that. I'll just scrape it off. Where do you live? Are you redoing an old church for your shop? We live in Lehigh, Utah, and yes, we have an old church that's from 19, 18, 18, 18, 18, sorry, 1894. And it's gonna be our retail store and it's on half an acre. So we keep our farm animals there because we don't have a huge yard and we just go there and keep them watered and whatnot. And my son lives on the property. So he sometimes helps out and we have a big garden there. And yeah, we, I feel like if you have access to land you should make good use of it. So that's why we decided to grow a big garden because we were gonna have to landscape and water anyways. So that's been fun. I've got zucchini, we've already eaten three i dropped two off at the neighbors and uh i've got these three and there's going to be five more ready she's, tomorrow she's making sure she picks them small so that they don't get all huge and, and yeah they taste better tasty. without the seeds in them like uh oh i bubbled that Ooh, you're gonna be in trouble it's just extra distress yep you can sand it that's off and lot. then it'll get kind that's of chippy there bubble. there's a lot of bubble I was doing so good not to cause bubbling and then look what you do. Look what you did. You guys ever watch Home Alone? That's like a common line in our house and it's probably not very nice. And he's like, look what you did, you little jerk. It's not because we think anybody's a jerk, but that's because we think the movie's funny. We have to tell people that don't know the movie about it so they don't think we're like being mean to each other. All right. What the heck? Okay, I need, here, brush me another coat over that. Very vigorous. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to go put this out in the sun and just let it dry. How are you, oh, somebody's talking to somebody else, Christina. Uh, what keeps the insects away? Um, the other thing, they if you can go to, like, if you don't like mosquitoes, you can go to um, Home Depot and they sell citronella plants. So not just the candles, but the plants themselves. I have some citronella plants for the backyard. And we also use neem oil on our, it's supposed to be an organic way to keep bugs off of your squash plants. One of our followers recommended it. I tried that this morning. We've used diotanaceous or diotomaceous. Tomaceous. Just make sure that you're wearing a mask because you're not supposed to breathe it in. Zeb was not wearing a mask when he put it on, but we have been schooled. So now we know. Apparently diopentomaceous is also not super great for bees, but it's better than like Roundup or like those kind of situations. All right, let's stop messing with this. That really needs to dry. Okay, I wonder if Cetronella will keep away chipmunk moles and raccoons. Um, I don't know about that. They probably just eat it. Um, Lori, the rail with the farm animals in it. I don't know the name of the song, but the, um, let's see. Sorry, guys. I, will I need a second coat the... on this lip. No, so many notifications popping up, hampering my ability to do what I want. Are you looking up a song? Oh, yeah. The guy, it's Horses Are Faster, and it's by Ian Munsick, M-U-N-S-I-C-K. He's a country singer. Um, he's just come into popularity the last few years that I noticed. So Sherry says, did you get food grade? Yes, we got food grade from the, our food store is where we got the guy with tenacious earth. Yeah, use it at night when the pollinators are not active. That's when we do it. So we... Um, water in the morning typically and then now that our plants are established we're not having to do night watering and so that's when we put the diatomaceous earth on because you want your plants to be dry and you need to do it after you've watered so Let's see 
Trisha right. says, when I was a kid, every one of the everyone had a table like this there for putting your telephone on, and the shelf held your phone books. <laughs> hey, there so, you go. Whoa. I think I am probably not going to distress this because I want another coat on all of it, but we can do the drawer if it's it's outside. It needs it's outside. more time. Yep. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. These are these are dry. We can use the dark and decrepit on these and show them how to do that. Yep. I'm going to grab another little paintbrush for the dark and decrepit, the little uh -oh. edge. Now let's see if I can find the dark and decrepit in my cabinet. It's only Good been luck what, like with that. I just cleaned this out maybe like a month ago. And yes, I know if you keep it organized, it stays that way, but that's just not the way Zeb and I live our lives. A lot of times stuff doesn't even get put out. We're like, we're tired from going to bed. Yeah. A lot of times it doesn't even like get a, put up. There's a big cabinet over there, and a lot of times it just sits on the top of the cabinet till I put it up. And I used to blame myself for things not being organized, but do you know who doesn't like to put stuff up? Who's a stacker? I'm a bad stacker. I, I know where think... everything is in my garage. Don't touch it. It's not actually a mess. I know where that's at. <laughs> I spend a majority of my life picking up after people. It is a bad mess right now. There's sawdust everywhere. All right. So I've got the dark and decrepit. I need to get a lint-free towel. So I'm just going around this edge again. It's really exciting. I know. <laughs> Watching paint dry is always they're, exciting. They're here for the before and after. Man, that really does look white on camera, though. Like yeah. It looks like a bright white. <laughs> I'll dim it down so you guys can see the pink. All right, so I'm using my little knob here. Can you guys see it? I'm just going to paint the dark and decrepit. I'll bring it in. Oops, it wasn't quite all the way dry. It's fine. Wait, here's my knob. I'm painting this on here. Oh, man. The white was not all the way dry in the cracks. That's all right. I'm just going to wipe it back. It's like a glaze. Remember, if you've been finishing furniture for any length of time, you've you probably used a glaze. And ta-da! Now you can see all the little detail on my knob. It's going to look super cute on here. I realized I got my focus face on. So, sorry. With dark and decrepit without. It's cute without, but you just miss all of the detail. Yeah, this is probably going to need coat three. Yeah, I'm going to let it dry all the way, and I'll do it off camera. But look how cute that decoupage is on there. We'll get the drawer finished, because that's going to be show you the most detail. And the, de the dark and decrepit also has a built-in top coat, so once I wipe this back, I will not need to do anything else. Like these oh, will dry. The dim didn't help the pink look. The, the dim didn't help it. Yeah, I tried dimming it up. All right, so we'll let these dry and then these will be done. All right, I'm going to check that drawer, Zip. Okay. Because I want to put my knobbies on it. Can you see if we have 220 in the drawer? Yeah, we should. So when we will distress this top too with a little bit of 220 grit sandpaper and that'll all those little wrinklies once it's dry will just give it some good age and you know you could leave it as is but for us it looks like we just put it on there we don't like that we so, don't want it to look brand new little uh, pro tip if you get bubbles and you sand them it'll make it look like chippy paint just be soft when you sand it so it doesn't peel back especially where this was out in the sun just using 220. Can you guys see me? She's using 220. I'll, I'll hold it up and sand. I was going to smooth out those bubbles that Zeb got when he was drying it, but then it's also going to make it chippy. Sorry, I got to put it down. I can't. I don't know how to angle the camera down. You might want to angle the camera down for when I darken your it because I can't hold I'll it. I'll bring it down in the air and dark and decrepit it. What? I know. You need three arms. I needed It's like a I three ring three circus yesterday. around here. Um, the other thing about this is, now I forgot what I was going to say. I don't know, but don't move that or you'll be out of camera. I don't know. It's gone. That's all right. Just going to smooth this out. Yeah, yesterday I was on a ladder like 20 feet in the air putting those fans up. And I had to, uh, 
I was trying to hold on with one arm and screw, uh, I drilled the screws in with the other. <laughs> the screw wasn't starting. I think I dropped the screw like eight times. <laughs> I finally dr drilled a pilot hole and then they went. It happens. It's always when you're in the air that all the crazy stuff happens. All right. I'm just going to come across and do the same thing that I did to the uh, knob and I'm going to do the edges. I don't really want to do the whole thing. I love me a good dirty pink. If this was regular DIY paint, like let's say I was using petticoat pink, I would have to seal it first before I do this because otherwise it would get really muddy and dirty looking. I'm just looking at comments over here. It might get muddy me. and dirty looking anyways. It's not what I wanted to happen. Oh, it's going too fast. It was hot and it dried too fast. Shoot. All right. It's all right, guys. Don't worry. I got this. Oh, uh, Ruru2 got all their IMD yesterday. All right. This is too muddy, people. It was hot and it dried really fast. You Where's my some, 220? You going to put some pink on there? Nope. You could always just brush some pink back over. I'm just going to sand it back. And I might dry brush. Oh, they saw it. It looks less white now. Okay. Hey, Sally. She says she's been here. She's watching a baby. Ah, oh, yes. Babies are cute. Is it Sally Von Zwoll or Sally? So Pat Reed says, I don't understand how you use the powder dark and decrepit. You just so the decrepit dust. You just use clear wax and you wax it and then you sprinkle the powder on and then you wipe it in. All right, I'm gonna come back with a little bit more pink. Hey, because that got a little it bit. It is too a dirty. nice summer day. It's a nice summer day out here too. It's hot, but you know that's what you want in the summer. Um, is it though? Yeah, the, the powder is decrepit dust. Okay. I promise I'm a professional. That did not look good. All right. I think I don't see. All any right. Questions. I'm starting over. You're starting over. You got to repaint that pink. Yeah, it was too. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you didn't use wax then. What? It's a good thing you didn't go with the yeah, wax. Yeah, it got too dirty because it was hot. Like the decrepit, it dried really fast. It's okay. Tip this down and show you where we're it's at. It's just paint with the decoupage paper. This is the cottage floral. And it's kind of like a damask style repeating pattern, but not a damask. <laughs> oh, you know what? This is dry enough. I can show you how to cut with the... So if you've got, if you're doing decoupage and you've got a nice flat edge, you see how this dips down right here? It wasn't a perfect cut. You can just take your paper, this is 220, and just slide it along the edge. I wouldn't slide it like this because you could rip the paper that way. I just pull down right along that edge and it just zips it right off right where I want it. And if you were concerned about this being distressed, you could always come back with a little bit of pink. But we're going to leave it distressed because the rest of it's probably going to get distressed. We'll let that cool a little bit. So Zeb, the church and your ideas on are spot on for that. Thanks. Let's see. By the way, these types of tables have the issue of bleeding bad. Yes, Lolita, they do, which is why. We actually haven't really had any bleed through on it. Maybe just a little back here. But I yeah, they, pink. they get a lot of use. They get a lot of like grease from hands and food set on them because they're usually by a chair or someone's going to watch TV and eat or they're going to they're going to watch TV or they're going to talk and eat on the phone. Yeah. All right. I'm wondering I might just let the, you guys might have to wait. I think I'm going to let this dry and use dark wax because for whatever reason that dark and decrepit was that you were able to show oh, them close that so you were able I to fixed just, it. So she got more dark than she wanted and she was able to just Paint right paint back it. over it. But let's put the it. knobs on so they can see it. So you're just going to have to imagine that it's been waxed because I'm going to let it dry all the way, especially that mold. I don't want to be rubbing on it. 
So if you follow us in any, any other place, we'll put it on community too. Um, but we'll post a picture of this. You may not see the picture though, if you don't like do all the things like the sharing like the and the notifications and things like that. So yeah, if so you're not seeing all of our posts and you want to, um, interact with the page, comment, like, share that all those things tell all the algorithms everywhere. Hey, I like this. I want to see more of it. And that way you won't miss stuff like the finished picture of this. So if you just go on where it says notifications and then you just put see all, then it'll notify you once I get this put up. It reminds me of that song. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. It's the same thing with Facebook. If you don't like it and love it, they don't know you want some more of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here you go. Yeah. We're going to show you kind of what it's going to look like, but not quite because it's going to be distressed and have more dark and decrepit. But dun dun dun! We got a shabby chic little nightstand. I think it turned out pretty darn cute. I feel like the star of the show is definitely the cottage paper. This is a JRV paper, so you can get it from one of our retailers or at jamierayvintage.com. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Bye, guys. Love you. Have a great Wednesday. We'll catch you guys probably Friday. Yeah, there'll be another video. <laughs> Tomorrow's busy.